Oh, what's happening ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to school. Connor Rose from slumsociety.co.uk. As always, and today I'm going to be talking to you about, as the title of the video dictates, why your metabolism isn't as slow as you think it is. But I could also have alternate titles for this talk, you know. I could also call it why you think you are eating low calories and should be losing weight, but aren't. In brackets, what's going wrong? Not a, not a short and sweet, but similar, similar conversation. Or we could call it why your calorie counting is wrong. Not as interesting of a title maybe, but also true. I'm gonna answer all of these three things for you in the same way with these six points behind me. Because we need to start this conversation at the beginning. If you think you have a slow metabolism, how do you know? Comment below. <laughs> how do you know? Have you tested it? Because I hope you have. We do this for people at Slum Society, Six Steps to Slim. It's one of the first things that we do. We figure out for people, firstly with an estimation and then with increasing accuracy over time, how fast their metabolism is. Every single member that I have knows how fast their metabolism is. But everybody else is just talking quite a lot of the time. They just say, oh, I've got a slum. How do you know? Oh, that person's got a fast meter. How do you know? How do you know? Or maybe you think, oh, well, people come to see me sometimes and they'll say, Oh, Connor, but I, I, I already only eat 1,200 calories per day and I'm still overweight and I've got weight to lose. So my metabolism's slow. What are we going to do? We can't take the calories lower than this. Again, my question, if you think you're eating 1,200 or low calories per day and you've still got weight to lose and it's not coming down, how do you know how many calories you're eating? Have you checked? Have you actually done calorie counting? Are you doing the calorie counting currently? Have you at least done it in the past and checked in the past? Because if you're not doing it now and you think that you're eating some sort of number, you don't actually know, do you? You're guessing. You just, this is a guess, isn't it? Oh, well, Connor, in the past though, I, I have lost weight, but I have to take my calories really, really low, like down to 1,200 calories per day, or I just get no results. This is also what people say. So this is what I've come to talk to you about today. Why this is not true. Why your metabolism is not as slow as you think. And literally, I, as a nutritionist, I know how fast people's metabolisms are, not only because I check, but also because as in nutritional science, as nutritionists, we've done studies. There's studies being done in what's called metabolic wards, literally metabolism hospitals, where they check how fast people's metabolisms are. And they've done it loads and loads of times to loads and loads of people. And there's a range of metabolisms, but it's not big enough that you can have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 stone to lose and be eating 1,200 or 1,400 or something really low calories like this and not be losing weight. This is not possible. People, some people have got slower metabolisms than others, definitely. Whole variety of reasons. I've done videos on it before, but not that slow. You'd have to be, if you're, for your metabolism to be only 1,200 calories per day fast, you'd have to be literally around 50 kilograms in body weight, tiny. In which case you probably wouldn't want to lose weight anyway, right? So what's going on then? Why are people getting this misunderstanding? Why are people making this mistake? It's not your metabolism that's slow. It's how you checked is wrong. This is what it is. It, you need to do calorie counting to check. Otherwise, how do you actually know? Because this is what your metabolism is, isn't it? If you're saying, if you're saying, oh, I have a slow metabolism, what you're saying is I can't eat much food, AKA many calories without gaining weight, right? That could be true. That could be fair. And if you say, oh, that person's got a fast metabolism, what are you saying? You're saying that person can eat loads of food without gaining any weight. So really, when we say metabolism, we're talking about calorie maintenance level, aren't we? We're talking about how many calories, how much food can you eat before gaining and losing weight? And this does vary for people, but I know how much, but one of the factors in this is you have to actually have checked or be checking how many calories you're actually eating. Otherwise, how do you know? You don't, do you? So you don't actually know. You're just guessing. You just think you're not eating much, but you haven't actually checked. We use calorie counting with our beginner members at Six Steps to Slim, Slim Society. Um, we use it to figure out how fast people's metabolism is, and we use it to help people make food adjustments at the beginning of the program. Then once that's done, they can stop if they want to. Um, this is how every single member knows how fast their metabolism is. And I would say about 50% of people come to see me and they say that they've done some sort of calorie tracking or food diary or food management in this way before in the past. Good, good. And I would say the other 50% of people who come to see me probably never tried anything like it before, which is also fine. 
It's probably 50-50. But I will say that 0% of people have ever done it properly. 50% of people say they've done it before, but they did it wrong. They did it wrong, and if you've done it before, chances are you did it wrong too, and you did it wrong in one or more of these six ways. This is what we're going through today. So you think you've checked how much food you actually eat. You think you've checked how many calories you've got to take it down to lose weight and what happened. And probably not. You've tried. And, and honestly, that's a good thing. You should try. It's a good thing. But it's a difficult thing to do. You need actual education. So here we go. Six ways that your calorie counting when you checked your metabolism or food intake, six ways. You, you might have got it wrong. You need to watch for these. These are problem areas. Number one, not checking portions via weighing. Very important. This is number one for a reason. If you are not weighing the portions of the things you're having, you know, like if you're getting breakfast cereal and pouring it into the bowl, and then you're on My Fitness Pal or whatever it might be, and you scan your breakfast cereal ding, with the barcode scanner, or you enter it, Cocoa Pops, it brings up 30 grams as the standard serving. But did you have 30 grams? You don't know, do you? You don't know, because you didn't actually check. You need to put the bowl on the scale, then press zero, then pour the cocoa pops in and actually check. If you just pour them into the bowl, chances are you had more like 75 to 100 grams, and this is triple as many calories as you thought it was. Imagine if you're not doing that with every food, but with enough foods, it's gonna remove your calorie deficit, especially when calorie deficits are sensitive. You need to weigh things out. If you're not weighing things, you don't have to weigh everything forever, okay? You just have to be getting it right at the start, otherwise what you're checking is wrong. You're not calorie counting, you're calorie guessing, and you're bringing out numbers on, a, on an app on your phone, but they're wrong. They're all wrong. The numbers of what calories you entered, were it says you've eaten, are wrong because you, you've not actually eaten what it says in the diary. Because you didn't check, you've gotta be very careful. Is it fun? No. It's not supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be effective. You know what is fun? Achieving your goals, losing weight for life, understanding food and your metabolism forever. It's worth it, it's just a weighing scale. You just put it on and then you just put the stuff on. Literally changes your life forever, but you've got to do it even though it's annoying. So I half apologize for it and half don't. Number two, not checking portions via serving sizes. And I need to hurry up as well because I've got three minutes left. I'm trying to cover six points here, oh my Lord. Um, <clears throat> This will trick you and it won't be your fault. Companies write stupid serving sizes on the side of things. Like if you know get a bottle of Coca-Cola, it'll say serves two or serves three on the side of it. So you know if you check the calories on the side, it'll say a hundred, but no, I'm making the numbers up. Okay, but it'll say a hundred, but that's for one serving and the bottle's got three servings and you just drank the entire thing. So it's actually triple what calories you thought it was. So watch out for serving sizes on packages. Number three, not counting extra bits, bobs and bites. Oh, I will have one of those, thank you. Oh, I've just got these chocolates. Oh, I will have one of those, thank you. Forgetting about it two minutes later. Even things like mints, like flipping tree ball mints. Calories, yes. They have them, you know, <laughs> stuff like this. Ooh, a little bit. Oh, I will steal a few chips. Or your children's leftovers, bit of crust. Oh, I'll dip it in the sauce. Forgetting about it later. Every little bit counts, ladies and gentlemen. Number four, not counting for cooking oil when you're cooking. Oil, I'm not exaggerating, is the highest calorie thing in existence. I'm not exaggerating. You know, if you go whoop, into a pan with it, that could be hundreds and hundreds of calories that then coats your food. And yes, it gives it a nice crispy texture on the edge, but it's adding hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of possible calories into your diet per day. And you think, well, I'm only eating around 1,500, so I should be losing weight. Yes, not accounting for the oil that you whoop in the pan. And it's just that easy. Whoop, that's it. Hundreds of calories extra per day into your diet, removing your calorie deficit, which your calorie deficit is quite sensitive if you're a lady that's not got the fastest metabolism or you're shorter or, you know, you're not somebody that loses weight easily. You need to be careful for every single thing. It's very expensive oil, not in terms of money, but in terms of calories and health. Um, and things that are fried as well, like, you know, if you've made oven chips at home, excellent if you've made oven chips at home. Low calories, one's frozen from a bag of McCain's or something. You know, if you buy them from the chip shop, deep fat fried, three times as many calories because it's just absorbing and coated in oil, you need to watch out for oil. Not counting for liquids, lattes are a waistline killer for ladies. Watch out for the things that you drink, fruit juices, you know. E except for water, everything's got a few calories, so just check carefully the things that you're drinking, and then you'll learn what's high and what's not, and what's worth it, and what's worth paying attention to, and what isn't. Then this is the last one, this is a burner, and I'm really sorry that I've run out of time, but this is a big one for people. Guessing calories at takeaways, cafes, and restaurants, and it's due to the oil and frying and extra sugars and sauces they add into it. But food from restaurants and cafes and takeaways, you know, if you've made that at home, you need to double or triple the calories in it. This is the thing that screws people up over and over again, sometimes for their entire life, and they think, yeah, but I don't eat much, I only this, this, and this. But if you're getting food from cafes and restaurants and takeaways, never, ever, ever underestimate how many calories are in these things. It's gonna be literally double or triple what it would be if you made it at home. That's why it tastes so freaking great. And I'm not kidding at all. That's why it tastes so great. So just be careful when you're eating out. Try and eat at calorie counted places if you're trying to be super accurate. If not, try and choose healthy, try and go for things that are not as fried. Connor Rose from Slum. Society.co.uk. Thank you so much. I'll speak to you and I'll see you again soon.